Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about congenital hyperbilirubinemia. This topic is very important for theory as well as exams like NEET PG and USMLE are concerned. So I will also highlight important MCQ points in between. Do watch full video for better understanding. And yes, if you are new to our channel, click the subscribe button and like the video. It helps us to grow. Congenital hyperbilirubinemia can be of two types, unconjugated type and conjugated type. Syndromes in unconjugated type includes grigler nazar syndrome and Gilbert syndrome and in conjugated type includes Dubin-Johnson syndrome and Daughter syndrome. We will study each of these syndrome in detail. So this was the basic bilirubin metabolism that we have studied in last video. We will see in detail what happens inside the hepatocyte, how this bilirubin is conjugated and carried to bile. The concept is important for understanding the concept of congenital hyperbilirubinemia. So consider this as a hepatocyte. Unconjugated bilirubin enters hepatocyte by process of diffusion. This unconjugated bilirubin is conjugated with glutathione with the help of enzyme UGT1A1 which is uridine diphosphate glucuronosyl transferase 1A1. Bilirubin is conjugated in the form of mono and diglucuronides. This conjugated bilirubin is transported to bile with the help of MRP2 channel that is multi-drug resistance associated protein 2. Some portion of this conjugated bilirubin are transported back into water circulation by MRP3 channel and subjected to reuptake by hepatocyte by OATP1B1 and OATP1B3 channel. OATP means organic anion transport protein. So this was the basic physiology inside the hepatocyte. Now let's see what happens in each syndromes. First of all, if there is defect in UGT1A1 enzyme, as you can see, bilirubin will not be conjugated. So there will be increase in unconjugated bilirubin, which is called as unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And two defects or two syndrome with UGT1A1 deficiency or defect includes kregler nazar syndrome and Gilbert syndrome. Then imagine if there is defect in this MRP2 channel. MRP2 channel carries conjugated bilirubin outside the hepatocyte into bile. So if there is defect here, it leads to increase in conjugated bilirubin and the syndrome associated with MRP2 defect is Dubin-Johnson syndrome. Then lastly, if there is defect in OATP1 channel, there is conjugated bilirubinemia due to reduced reuptake of conjugated bilirubin from water circulation and the syndrome associated with OATP defect is rotor syndrome. So these were the basic defect of each syndromes. Now we will study some important MCQ points regarding each syndromes in detail. So this is the same mechanism image from Harrison but I have discussed in simplified way in previous slides. Now starting with unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. First of all, krigler nazar syndrome. As I discussed, there is defect in UGT1A1. So conjugation is affected. This is autosomal recessive disorder. And it is basically of two types, type 1 and type 2. In type 1, there is complete deficiency of UGT enzyme. So serum bilirubin usually exceeds more than 20 mg per deciliter and child presents with jaundice and carnicterus. The reason for carnicterus is Unconjugated bilirubin crosses blood-brain barrier and gets deposited in brainstem nuclei and basal ganglia, which causes carnicterus. As it is associated with carnicterus, it has very high mortality. But in type 2, UGT enzyme is present, but typically less than 10% of normal. So usually, serum bilirubin does not exceed more than 20, and child presents with jaundice, but without carnicterus. So mortality is less. And treatment for type 1 includes only liver transplantation. Phototherapy can be tried till liver transplantation. Other modalities like isolated hepatocyte transplantation have been tried and gene replacement therapy can be the future scope of this disease. But in type 2, we can use certain enzyme inducer like phenobarbital. Phenobarbital will convert unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin by inducing enzyme UGT1A1. It causes bilirubin reduction by more than 25%. But bilirubin remains around 3 to 5 mg per deciliter after phenobarbital treatment. It does not come to normal. So this is the basic difference between type 1 and type 2 krigler nazar syndrome. Here I have highlighted important MCQ points with red color. You can take screenshot if you want. Now coming to next that is Gilbert syndrome. 
As we discussed, this is also associated with defect in UGT1A1. The enzyme is reduced to 10 to 35 percent of normal. This disease can be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive, and the usual age of presentation is at or after puberty or in adult life during routine examination. The typical characteristic feature of this disease is serum bilirubin is elevated with fasting, stress, alcohol use, and other systemic illnesses. And patients usually have mild unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia with serum bilirubin fluctuating around 5 to 8 mg per deciliter. And here also treatment is phenobarbital which is enzyme inducer. But the important point to remember here is it normalizes serum bilirubin. In contrast to Krigdalnaja type 2 where serubin doesn't come to normal. So this was the difference between Krigdalnaja type 1 and type 2. We will also add one column of Gilbert syndrome along with this. So, this table summarizes the unconjugated congenital hyperbilirubinemia and the important points are highlighted with red color. You can take screenshot here if you want. Now coming to conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. First is Dubin-Johnson syndrome. As I discussed, there is defect in MRP2 channel. So, conjugated bilirubin cannot be excreted into bile. And in this condition, serum bilirubin remains around 2 to 5 mg per deciliter. As there is increase in conjugated bilirubin, bilirubin urea is usually present. And the cardinal feature of Dubin Johnson syndrome is there is accumulation of dark granular pigment in central lobular hepatocyte. As this bilirubin remains deposited in liver, there is excessive pigmentation. And so this condition is also known as black liver jaundice. This pigment is derived from epinephrine metabolites that are not excreted normally. Now coming to diagnosis of Dubin Johnson syndrome. There is one specific test for Dubin Johnson syndrome which is BSP test or Brom sulfalin test. BSP is non-toxic compound which is excreted through same channel that is MRP2 channel. It is given IV and serum concentration is checked at 45 minutes and after 2 hours. Normally what happens is when this MRP2 channel is function, BSP tends to excrete to bile from liver within 2 hours. So when you measure serum concentration at 2 hours, it is usually less when compared to measure at 45 minutes. But when there is MRP2 channel defect, the serum concentration at 2 hours is more or equal to concentration at 45 minutes. So when there is increased serum concentration at 2 hours, test is abnormal. Another test is urine coproporphyrin excretion. There are naturally two coproporphyrin isomers, 1 and 3. Normally, 75% of coproporphyrin in urine is isomer 3 type. But in patients with Dubin Johnson syndrome, more than 80% is of isomer 1 type. But total urinary corporoporphyrin content is normal. Then another test is oral cholecystography. There is non visualization of gallbladder and biliary tree because the dye won't be taken up by biliary tree. Then coming to last, that is rotor syndrome. There is defect in OATP channel, that is organic anion transport protein channel. As we discussed, some portion of conjugated bilirubin are transported back into portal circulation by MRP3 channel and subjected to reuptake into hepatocyte by OATP1B1 and OATP1B3 channel. Defect in OATP channel leads to increase in conjugated bilirubin due to reduced reuptake from portal circulation. This disease is also autosomal recessive disorder and clinical spectrum is usually similar to Dubin Johnson syndrome, but we need to differentiate this from Dubin Johnson syndrome. So this table differentiates and summarizes conjugated congenital hyperbilirubinemia. As you can see, there is defect in MRP2 channel in Dubin Johnson, whereas there is defect in OATP channel in daughter syndrome. An important test for Dubin Johnson syndrome includes BSP test, liver biopsy, and oral cholecystography, which are normal in daughter syndrome. And total urine coproporphyrin excretion remains normal in Dubin Johnson syndrome, but it is increased in daughter syndrome. So friends, this was all about this video. I hope you like the content. Do like the video and subscribe our channel. This helps us to grow. Thank you.